Okay, so you ask me who I am. Who is this Stephen Toroff? Well, I've been trying to think that out, fathom that out now for 71 years, really. Who am I? Uh, not so easy when you want to think, when you want to look at yourself and say, well, who am I? I mean, we look, well, we go by a name. Uh, we have a, a personality. We have an individuality. Uh, it's, we're so complicated, aren't we? We're really so complicated. We have loves, we have hates. You know, so much goes on with us. So when I ask myself, who am I? I think we have to look at, well, am I the, this name? Am I Stephen Toff? Well, logic tells me that this name is only given for a short period of time while I'm alive. Uh, so my name and my fame isn't permanent. It's just not permanent. Yeah? Um, it comes and goes. And so we look at that, okay, so if I'm not the name and my fame comes and goes, what about my family? Well, my family come and go. Mum and dad come and go. Sisters, brothers come and go. Aunts and uncles come and go. Friends come and go. All these things come and go. Lovers, wives, all come and go. You know? The only thing that comes and stays is truth. Truth is the only thing that is permanent. Now, what I find really strange is that we go to war, we kill people and take things that are not permanent. We take gold, we take oil, we take land, we take slaves, you know. We take things that none of these things are permanent. We don't go after the one thing that is permanent, the truth. The truth that, can, as Jesus said, can set you free. So when you start looking at who am I, I realised a long time ago, I'm not the name and I'm not the body. Because as I said, the body will come and go. So it's hard to really answer the question, who am I, on a physical level. And if we talk about spiritual levels, yeah, the, the conclusion is, well, who am I? I am. But that don't mean a lot to many people. They're words. Words are, are interesting, but they have no real value unless you have an experience of them. And how do you get that experience of who I am? You know, you look outside of yourself, you look around, you look at everything, and you think, wow, you know, so much is going on. But that don't give you who you are. That gives you the sense of individuality. I come home, I shut the door, I'm locked up in my little home, I'm there. My individuality is behind four walls. And these four walls and boxes that we seem to be in um, follow us throughout our life. Because if you think about it, we're born in a box, in a room. We live in a box, a house. We go to work in a box, a car. We work in a box, an office. We come home to the box and we die in a box, we're buried in a box. Everything is about boxes. So is, it, it, could it be that we're, you know, our, our whole understanding is that we're actually living in a box? And if that's the case, then how do we get out of it? And what is there? What is there? If we do get out of it, what are we expecting? And we hear of all different stories of people getting out of the box, having one foot in the box, one foot out of the box, giving us all different ideas. But that's their ideas, their thoughts, and their experiences, they're not yours. Look, you can read a thousand books and um, you'll forget most of them. But you have one personal experience, you remember that. I've been very fortunate. I've had many experiences with God or whatever name you want to call it. And those experiences have been the building blocks of my character and they've evolved me to where I am today. 
I have a little bit of an understanding of myself. I, I've had the experiences to help other people to understand themselves. And in that understanding, I've come to realize one thing exists, truth. That's it, truth exists. Now, you're going to say, well, there's 7.3 billion truths out there. And yeah, you're correct, that's collective reality. But in ultimate reality, there's only one truth. I am. So how do we get to that point? Well, the easiest way uh, would be to stop thinking. And, and the moment you stop thinking, you're in the now. Past, present, and future become this moment. Because they're still going on. Past, present, and future are still going on. So we become in the now. Now, wow, people say, cool, that's really difficult to stop thinking. Well, maybe it is, but until you try, you don't know, do you? I, I experienced a, a very powerful stage um, when I got to that stage of stop thinking, and that was in Switzerland. Um, I got to that stage, and when I entered that stage, incredible phenomena happened, instant phenomena. I was um, started to time shift, past, present and future become one. And they were filming this as it happened. I was able to take objects into the future and bring it back. Very interesting. When they were trying to film me, when I was doing this, my vibration, my body vibration was so fast that the cameras, the um, shut, the, um, sh what's he saying? Object. No, the um, lenses. The lenses couldn't focus in on me. They were going in and out of all the cameras that were trying to film me. My vibration, my body vibration was so fast. So I know these things you can attain. It's the same as now where I've attained to turn my body to light, and they film that. And if you look at all the pictures where I turn my body to light, it's quite interesting. But it's a science, it's not magic. It's a science of realisation, real, realising the truth. So you are the truth. Of course you don't feel it, do you? It's like saying, yeah, you are God. But you know, when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, that's not God looking back at you, is it? That's the face of too much hurry, too much worry and too much curry. Hurry, worry and curry. It's hard to believe that we are gods. Yeah, of course it is, because we don't really act like uh, a spiritual God, I should say. Now, a whole concept of our lives are interesting. Because it's from the moment we're born, and it's a moment of celebration, isn't it? And we're given a, a given name, and we're given a date. This is your birthday. But that's really interesting. We celebrate our birthday. But I think we've got that the wrong way round. We should celebrate the birthday with your mother. Your mother gave you birth. That's the one we should celebrate. We should celebrate her. This is why I always say to people, you must always respect the womb you're born from. Doesn't matter if you love or hate your mother, you argue with her, you should always respect her. She gave you life. And you should always love her. Yeah, always love her. And so you see, this follows through um, with our own lives. Because every night you go to bed, you go to sleep. And in, in other words, you die. You don't really remember anything. You know, and when you wake up, it's a new birthday, isn't it? So, in that birthday, we generally have celebrations. People buy you presents or gifts. Well, you see, every day, being your birthday, God gives you a gift. He gives you the present. He gives you the present 
to do whatever you want with it. How beautiful is that? You can't have a better lover than God. You can't have a better partner than God. I realise that. Name and fame come and go. God comes and stays. Truth comes and stays. Seek the truth within you. Seek the true name that you have within you. For that's the only permanent name you have. Love. Oh, tremendous word. It means something different to everybody in the world. And I, I spoke to you before about this love. Love without compassion is no love at all. Compassion makes us human. Because love, so many types of love in the world today. People love to kill people. People love money. People love power. But without compassion, we're not even human. So these are just a touch of who I am. You know, what's in a name? But what's in your action? That's most important. This is why I, I, I chose as my yoga, bhakti. Bhakti encompasses everything I need as a human being. You know, truth, love, compassion, wisdom and honour. These are the five pillars of bhakti. And if you live them, then you live in complete yoga. Because yoga isn't f f five minutes a day or one hour a day or half an hour in meditation a day. Yoga is 24 seven. It's every single day, every single minute of that day. How you live your life. That's yoga. You know, you haven't got to sit in meditation for hours on end you ain't got to do all the exercises for hours a day, all help. But when you do when you when you're doing your bhakti, you're doing service. Service to God. Now how can we serve God? God's got everything. So we serve humanity. Service to humanity is service to God. Hands that help are holy and then nips that pray. Don't just pray for the help of others. Physically help them. Physically help them. I know in this world today it's very difficult. You can't put the news on without reading or hearing about some poor souls dying, being blown to pieces, you know, countries being destroyed, families being wiped out. Man's inhumanity to man has just grown and grown and grown and grown. And it's sad. You know, I, you know, you expect for the 21st century a much more pleasant way of life. Uh, educational system that is, is very good. A science is, is great. We've got all these things, but we don't have compassion. And without that, we're very lost. So who's Stephen Toff? I'm just a man who loves God. That's it. I'm just a man who loves God. Finding my way like you're finding yours. I've been very lucky. I've, I've been involved with this work for about 50 years. I've seen hundreds of thousands of people, healing-wise. I, I, I share my experiences with people. I help them uh, to have their experiences, uh, hopefully. Um, so that's it, really.